Today's film is The Mad Butcher, originally known as Lo Strangulatore di Vienna, released in 1971. The film stars Victor Bruno and Franca Policello. The music is by killer nun composer Alessandro Alessandroni. It is written by Dag Molin, Charles Ross, and the one and only Dick Randall, and was directed by Guido Zerli. After being released from a mental hospital, Otto returns to his old job as a butcher. He tries to adjust to his new life, but after a bitter argument with his wife, he accidentally kills her. Fearing he will be sent back to the hospital, he grinds up her body and sells it as sausages. As friends and relatives start asking questions about her disappearance, they too start ended up in the butcher's display case. Dick Randall, one of us, granted the opportunity to produce films in the golden age of exploitation cinema. A man of crass humour, mammary tastes, an affable personality with none of his associates having a bad word to say about him as a person. His productions are always recognisable from their sleazy yet fun sensibilities. If it's an exploitation film from the 70s and it feels like a parody of itself, no doubt Randall had something to do with it. The Mad Butcher is a black comedy, or at least thinks it is, that tells the whimsical tale of the mental decline of a Venetian Sweeney Todd whilst he turns women into sausage. Yep, this might be the contender for the most light-hearted serial killer film ever made. Victor Buono, best known probably for his appearance on the 60s Batman series as King Tut, was the atypical cartoon villain. His plump appearance and Shakespearean background meant he was always effective as an untrustworthy but not too menacing adversary, and that's just scratching the surface on his storied career. Buono had some star power by the time he picked up Randall's call, and so The Mad Butcher is a film that works around his strengths. Like Todd Slaughter before him, only with a wider girth, Buono has that ability to turn on the charm as quickly as he can twist the knife. Whenever he's on screen, it's a camp delight, helped greatly by Alessandro Alessandroni's chirpy score. Whenever he's not, well, he actually has a strong supporting cast who nail the tone of the film quite well. Comedy always ages poorly, but the theatrical style of acting is still amusing to watch. It gives the film that synthetic, otherworldly quality that is probably what motivated something weird to release it back in the early 2000s. The cheap sets, the overacting, and the macabre sense of humour fits right in with their brand. Not exactly a German creamy, not exactly an Italian gothic. It fits right in between the two, with the black humour being strong glue attaching the two sensibilities. What has given The Mad Butcher so much longevity from its initial theatrical release to VHS to DVD? I think it's the unreal atmosphere the film gives off due to the European style black comedy, the emotive acting, the indistinct time period and the backlot set interiors. When people think of the word Euro cult, what comes to mind mostly resembles The Mad Butcher. In conclusion, The Mad Butcher is a colourful film, both visually and tonally. It's a rollicking good time amongst unwitting cannibals that holds up due to its surreal atmosphere and campy direction. I have no problem recommending this to any cult film fan. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Tomorrow's film is Play Motel.